you, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. If we can call it to order at 637. We were downstairs talking about the opportunity for expanding ambulance services. That's why we were late. So it's dry, like popcorn dry, but we're talking about it, and that's okay. Tonight we're going to hear from the library, and they're going to come in with a budget presentation of a reduction. No, sorry. <laughs> Good laugh right there. Uh, we're going to have some select board updates. We got a snow and ice deficit spending expand <clears throat> extension. And based on today, I don't expect it to be a hell of a lot when all said and done. Request of, request of the highway superintendent, and rightfully so. We've got an appointment list for uh, public wares and a one day alcohol license policy update. The town administrator has been working furiously on, for alcohol? The last, on alcohol for the last couple of weeks before he leaves tomorrow to go skiing for a week. So don't call him. He's gone until next Tuesday. He can call. He can call. It'll be all right. Uh, any comments to start from the board? We'll leave updates for later, but comments in general? Um, one, one, Mr. Chair. Um, the other couple weeks ago, um, a member of our community passed away, and and Frank Bailey, and I'd just like to offer my condolences to... Uh, to his wife Jackie and his son Ryan and Chris, but at the at his services, um, we always talk up here, and and we've mentioned before in our um, in report to the community that we as a board have always thought that it's very important that if you don't volunteer in in the town, like you see our library committee here, and we thank them for their service. Um, but Frank volunteered, and you've probably seen his car, the lime green box that he drove around for DAV. But at the, at the service, um, they acknowledged Frank's um, volunteer time. And I kind of thought it was um, amazing, his dedication, that even when he wasn't feeling well, he was still doing that. But... Frank had donated 3,750 hours to uh, DAV driving, driving the van and, and serving in the, with the disabled American vets. And I just think that that's um, an important thing that and people like Frank keep our community strong and, and going in the right place. Just, just as our, our, our people that serve in our community, you know, in a library or finance committee or or even Oz running the TV but I, I just want to acknowledge um, the good things that that Frank did um, and his 3750 hours of volunteer service I think that was a quite amazing attribute to the man and speaks volume about Frank and his family so thank you Frank we'll miss you thank you mr. chair thanks Tom Okay, so we're going to start off uh, tonight with a budget presentation from the library. Anybody who's been to the library knows it's, a, it's, a, it's a, not just a welcoming, wonderful space that's well run, full of programs, but full of smiling people. And they're here tonight to talk about uh, what it actually costs the town's contribution, because we're not the only contributor to the library and its operation. But the team is here, which means it's Catherine and her backup <laughs> and they, they put her straight up front they're like no you you, you guys go <laughs> so if you want to take right off from there we'll we'll uh we'll start right off and thanks for coming in oh thank you for having me um thank you guys for recognizing the work we do at the library um 2019 was another record-breaking year for us we had the highest circulation ever the highest visits the highest number of programs and the highest program attendance so this is the fifth year in a row that we've been steadily increasing all hmm. these factors and we're very proud of that so. And thank you for the town's contributions, because without it, we would not be able to do any of the great work that we do, as well as thanks to our donors and the Friends of Sunderland Public Library. Um, I guess I will start with the um, library building operating. So this is the funds that go towards supporting um, the library as a building. Um, so this year, we are asking for a $5,000 increase in this line item. Um, the reason for that is that our beautiful new-ish library is turning 16, it's our sweet 16 this April. Um, and so in particular, last year, we had a lot of um, just unexpected building, um, um, building repairs that we needed to have done, building work, um, maintenance, um, everything just seems to be increasing in cost and increasing in regularity. 
Um, so last year we also requested this five thousand um, dollars, but we weren't. Um, it was not. You know, was not able to be funded at that time. So we're asking for it again this year, um, and we're hoping that this will allow us to just make sure nothing falls behind in terms of maintaining our lovely, beautiful library that we're very grateful to have. Um, we've just noticed a lot of increases in regular utilities. Um, our monthly phone bill had a 4.7% increase. Um, our sewer bill increased by almost 4%. Um, so we're just asking for a little bit extra money there to you know, kind of cover these increases that we can expect to have. But we are also asking for just an additional $4,525 um, to go for the unexpected um, increases that we know are going to come. Um, essentially, our um, cleaning bill seems to increase every year, but we never really quite know what that's going to be until June. <laughs> right, right. Um, you know, so we do expect that to come up, and then we just don't know what's what's going to fail. Um, I will say, um, not last September, but the September before, our handicapped access button that opens the front door broke, and that was you know over, I think it was over three thousand dollars to repair that. Um, so things like that just immediately takes a big chunk of your budget out. So we just would like to be prepared for, for if things like that happen in our building. Um, I will also say we've put in several um, capital requests to kind of handle the, the larger things that we expect to happen. Do you have any questions about my request for the, the building line? Mr. Chair, how, how come the, uh, it is a sewer? I was headed there. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I was headed there. I, 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 I mean, we, have to home, we have homework on that one. Mm. Because it's, it's based on fixtures, right? Correct. It's not like they've been so adding toilets. They don't do it by volume. We repaired a toilet. I don't know yeah. if that would. Yeah, that but would no, same toilet, anymore. same sink, same water fountains. Right. No, and, and, I, and, and Catherine, just, I, I was just curious because um, so like some towns, some towns base sure their sewer rates on water usage yeah and it, it typically it's not unusual for your sewer rate to be three times whatever the water usage is right. between um october and april because then they take the sun the summer where people are watering so then they just multiply but we don't we just have a straight straight fee and our our fees have been pretty con the, constant the, the, although last year would they go up a little bit right a little bit yeah. contractually it's like 2.75 for each of the users yeah Okay. But anybody is hooked up. But that's something we'll, we have homework to do as well. Why, yeah, because I'm, I'm wondering if it has to do, you know, so we have the geothermal pump system, which hmm. relies Close. on water to circulate through, but that wouldn't, Close having loop. one of those broke? Okay. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go to the ground. If why it did, it would be really cool. Building? Why, do we, why do we build our own building? District versus yeah, a town it's department. Not, it's not towns. Yeah, and, and the same, the same goes with water. We, the right. water we pay for, and but the it, and it's kind of, I, I, I've, personally I've come to recognize that like everybody isn't, on, like so school gets town water. Well, everybody in town isn't on town water. So should everybody be in town be paying for that or just the people on the water district? So I, I, I guess I've come to the conclusion I can accept the town because we do the same, we have the same argument discussion points over at South County EMS about um, sewer and water rates that we get charged for that. So I guess I almost resigned myself. I can, okay, I can, I guess I can understand it. So. So the sewer, the sewer use uh, formula is pretty straightforward. Number of attached, number of attachments divided by total operating cost. Stop. And then for there us. Is, for us in the town. So if we're attached to it, we all end up paying for it. If you're, if you're not attached, you simply don't. I do have to ask, and we'll have Jeff, Jeff uh, we'll reach out to Rich ourselves in the interim and see just what that percentage is if they're aligned. You know, why, why does that, some, was there something missed for years? Anyway, that could have been also right. Yeah. Was something missed for years, and we'll have to have to figure that out. But would, would it be an increase in water usage? No, though? we don't really? monitor. No, it's we just based on okay. Yeah, it's, we, it's we've actually. Don't have to struggle been, with this. We yeah. we we we've, we've actually had those discussions because, um, you would, th the, the the discussion points being that you should pay for what you're using that yeah. model. Yeah. It, it's uh, something that we seem to do well at. Unfortunately, the town hasn't had an appetite to do that. So 
they, they, they kind of, the sewer users seem to prefer just this, this rate. Flat rate. And we end up with still like one of the lowest rates in the state, so. Yeah. It's a, it's a catch-22. You have people with a water service, and if you monitor the water service, and they have lawn sprinklers, or if they're seasonal bed, so there's wind, it's complicated. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> it's like measuring air. It's like, okay, how much air are we breathing? And anyway, yeah. and how much are we putting Well, back? how much are we using? How much are we using? Exactly right. Um, that Some said, of us have a lot of hot weight. <laughs> this, this table. Um, I had a question about... Uh, energy reduction efforts in the last couple of years and have you seen benefit outside of the retail purchase price of KW have you seen drops in the actual usage because there have been a couple of initiatives one recently completed as well so I've been tracking our electric usage um, very closely since yep. last year I noticed a huge increase in the amount of electricity the library was using was it the air handlers fixed I well, I don't know because essentially, so we had some air handlers not working right. um, and we had them repaired, yep. um, which obviously would be a huge electrical increase. But this year, all of our um, air handlers are working mm -hmm. except for one right now. Right. But anyway, sure. all, almost all of them are work, have right. been working and it's it's a lot less, hmm. a lot less usage. And I, for the life of me, I cannot figure out what the difference is from last year to this year and why we're using less electricity and why we had that big spike. Um, because we, same number of computers, I mean, same number yep. of lights. It, right. Not, there was no change, be, besides adding another, you know, replacing a air handler or two. But even that, but that, that should be a level increase, you know, we're still using that, those new air, air right, handlers. Right, right, right. So Anything, it'd be, you think it would be more efficient. Yeah. But hmm. maybe we got to look at tacking on some devices that monitor sure. electricity. Makes a great deal of and sense. And then kind of figure out and help us figure out where. Pull it down by, by individual like device space. or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great um, because I, I am baffled by it. We are all baffled by it. No extension of hours. No. More humans? Maybe, but not. I mean, not. Not significantly. I mean, yeah. more, more humans, you know, you're at 100 BTUs per person per hour. But it, but even but it's less this year, you know. So like, and we we had the most, you know, the most number of visitors. Yep. I mean, not a huge increase, huh. you know. So it's. Or somebody, like, or somebody change the thermostat, right? I, I yeah. monitor that. <laughs> well, I mean, on her phone yeah. now. No, on her phone. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing tonight, Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> Monitoring the nature of the library. Oh, I get emails there. I was going to say, <laughs> you get the notifications probably, right? Getting yeah, emails from the building. Yeah. No, I, you know, yeah. so it's just, yeah, and I'd love to do like an energy audit. Mm -hmm. um, I know our windows are leaky. Um, we had the building power wash, and the amount of water that came in through our windows was a little alarming. You knew alarming. right away. Sure. Yeah, I know exactly which windows <laughs> are leaking and how much now. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like there's a lot more of the library that could happen at the library to make us more energy efficient because we are a huge energy user in town. Jeff, if I could ask you to reach out to uh, Eversource when you come when, at your first convenience to see, hey, how do we do a how do we do a building wide monitoring and specifically uh, remind them it's an all effectively an all electric building. Yeah. That would be helpful because you could pull it down to one goofy thing. Right. Well, yeah, you could just like a toilet running. You don't think about eight what what affect the toilet yeah. running until you watch a meter spinning. Right, and then you go, oh my god. Right. Yeah. And and it's like, I mean. We, I've seen buildings close down at the Newton campus mm -hmm. that no one's been in, and all of a sudden, hundred thousand gallons of water over a month. Right, right. Oh, going through a toilet. Right, right. So, makes perfect sense. I did, did have one question on the the phone bill. Are yeah. you guys on the same system that we're on here? Yeah, yeah. we're over IP. Uh -huh. hmm. Yeah, so that that was the big increase for last year. But then even so, from in this fiscal year, I wasn't quite expecting that we did have a an increase in that um, as well. And that the we're same just kind of absorbing. software too. Yep, same software, same phones, I think. It's that's the same company. Hmm. Have we that's, seen one? That's a pretty big jump for phone. I'm not aware of one. We'll have to double check that, that as well mm -hmm. if we could. Only in that we, town wide, we switch to that. So if you're yeah. seeing it, who else is seeing I it? I think it's oh, everyone because I remember right. reaching out to Cindy when I saw yeah. this and asked what it, what was up, <laughs> and she said it was it was normal. So. No, it's not normal. Okay. <laughs> well, no, she, she said it was. Right, right. She was expecting it. I just was not. It could have been part of a contract. Yeah. Okay. So, so are the are the uh, geothermal pumps? Are they are they on VFD, Scott? Mm -hmm. And monitored for alarms and efficiency. And have they been replaced lately? 
the drives. Yeah. The platform has. The drives were replaced as part of the platform, but the pumps are in good working stead, and they alternate now on a, on a, on a recurring basis. They, they capture they that? Not. What? That they were After not all that they, arguing? No, they were not able to program it to do that, and I, it's, hmm. not, it's not worth the hassle of having them to come back. So th theoretically, there's a way I can manually yeah. change it myself if I wait until the exact moment when they've run for the exact same amount of time, and I, there's no way for me to track that. Really? Yeah, and it, it's honestly, it's not worth the energy for me to, to right. look into that because we, we did try and I, you know, set up on the schedule and was ready to go and asked them for help when it wasn't working right and then that was the re response that I got. Can we talk tomorrow, Catherine? Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because I would like to, it would be nice to have them alternating. At least at this point, you know, we had the one pump running for yep. who knows how many years just running. Now we're on the other pump, so it is kind of evening it out. Um, but it would be nice if we could alternate between the two Got as it. we like. Yeah. And then it, you, then you don't have one sitting there, get, not getting it for a long period of time. And it's it's even out of the way or a little better. Yeah. yeah. And if, if there is a problem with the pump that's running right now, it <clears> should <throat> automatically switch to the other one. We have one. tested that. That mm -hmm. does work. Yeah. Um, but you don't want go. the other one to be yeah, sitting for five years or whatever, right. not know something's wrong, and then you're, you're out two pumps. Yep, exactly. See that's how? Okay. I was just asking Scott. So it, I, I have a thing where... In 2013, someone did a, 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 we redid a water tank. And from 2013 to 2020, I've been asking, we used to be able to monitor the level, but we couldn't do it. For what, and, and we were given every excuse. So for seven years, I've been trying to get, so I finally asked an INC guy. There you go. And, and the guy had it up and running in three hours. And and you just have sometimes you just have to ask the right person, Catherine. Yeah. I, and and, that, and that's it's a very frustrating thing. I don't know why why it happens, but I know. Yeah, and it's hard. I, I wait. It took me seven years, so hopefully we can get you done better hopefully. better than that. I mean, it's, at this point, it's working. I'm very happy with that. It's working. So no, it'd be it'd be nice. I, I mean, so you can argue you can argue what's better to have one have both things fail at the right. same time or have. But one frozen when you need it. Right. Yeah. But but if you let something just sit there for, for years without running, it's that's not, good. not a good thing. No. And you don't want to run the other one to death either. You right. want to have two working pumps at all times. We can help you. Thank you. <laughs> Were there any other questions about the, the library building? Did the building get its envelope work done to the green community piece, or is that pending? Um, you mean the, the light... The no, LED lights? Not the lights, though. There was some building envelope work that was supposed to happen as well. Or am I completely... Got it. Okay. Oh, the main... Yeah, the main... Yes. <laughs> um, that is con going to continue in the spring. There's just a few more um, projects that they wanted to work on that they weren't able to get to this Great. summer. But okay. it is in the works. <clears throat> and we don't... We did not put in another capital request to continue cool. that. It should be done in the spring. And the pointing all worked out well? All that? Great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, looking much better. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, so how much is it cost us to pay people? Okay, um, do you want to do the um, the library expense first sure. or the yeah. salaries? No, we can go through the expense. Okay, um, so this year we're asking for a four thousand dollar increase in the library expense, um, and so the reason for this is um, that our um, every year we um, you know the cost of materials increases significantly. Um, I think kind of. Something I, I put in here to kind of illustrate it. Um, the cost of DVDs has increased an average of 12% um, hmm. just in the past year. Um, increase of books is an average of 1.4%, not, not quite as drastic, but um, these do seem to increase. And for the most part, we've been pretty, um, pretty well level funded. I think there was a, one year you guys gave us an extra $1,500, um, which we appreciate. Um, but at this point, the, the cost of materials continues to go up, but we're um, at the, you know, essentially level funded. Right. Um, and so in, when that happens, um, our, we still have to meet state purchasing requirements, which increase every year. Um, and so when that happens, when we receive a certain amount by the, you know, from the town, which is not enough for us to meet those state purchasing requirements, we then have to go to our donors and request it. Um, this year we're asking for $12,000 from our donors in order to meet state purchasing requirements that make us a certified library and enable us to, to be a library. Um, which is a, a very large amount. So essentially, the, 
Um, the burden on the town has remained level. We're getting less materials, um, and then we're asking the burden on our private donors goes up markedly. Um, so we're just asking for a little bit of extra funds to help us level that out. It'll help us um, be part of CW Mars. Our membership to CW Mars is over one third of the, the budget that we received from the town of Sunderland at this point. Um, and so, you know, that's July 2nd. A third of our, our, but our materials purchasing budget is gone, and that um, CW Mars, we want to be part of that. That's really, our, you know, the best part of our library. I think is that cooperative. Sure. You know, it enables our patrons access to millions of items that we, you know, otherwise we would not have. Um, but um, essentially, we, we just would would like to lessen the burden on our donors and hopefully ask the town to allow us to provide the same amount of materials. Mm -hmm. It just costs more now. So this is a shift away from the donors toward a recurring revenue stream. Yes. Uh, I'd actually explain it differently okay. and say okay. that we are, will ask, we put a uh, goal every year on the um, <coughs> annual book fund. Yeah. And that goal tends to go up every year. But we don't want, we're concerned that the increase in that line item can't all come out of donations so it's not like we're going to ask for less we're not going to we're not lowering our fundraising goal we're got concerned it. that we're being pushed to raise it too high got it that makes sense we're also seeing um we would like to begin purchasing more digital items even though we circulate plenty of books there's no concern of, towards that um being part of cw mars opens up um allows us to have ebooks and e-audio books and digital magazines and wonderful services elsewhere but um mm -hmm. There's very long wait times for popular items, so I have been purchasing extra copies of ebooks. Um, for instance, I waited eight months to listen to Where the Crawdads Sang. Um, I was on hold for three months for our community read book. I just got it in time. It starts in March. So I got to listen to it really quick. Um, so. You know, so I'm so I am purchasing additional items. We also added um, Canopy streaming service, which is a wonderful allows our patrons um, streaming access to um, documentaries, videos, language learning, all sorts sorts of kids stuff, um, really great service. Um, so we've been paying for that out of state aid and it has been used pretty widely. We're really happy with that. Um, so it just it definitely, um, we're seeing an increased demand for digital items, which previously we did not purchase at all. And so now we're, we're adding on those, those costs. Are we purchasing licenses or are we purchasing digital content or? It's um, it's difficult to explain how it works, and it's different for every single item and every publisher. I'm not going and checking out a tower. Yeah, because it depends on the publishing agreement. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, I mean, so it's it, it even if we're complex. ordering from one company, it's different for each item. But I, if you want to, Canopy is essentially pay per use. So yep. for every video that our patrons um, borrow, um, watch, we, we pay three dollars per video, um, and we have we have caps on it. There's limits for how many people can borrow, so it, you know we are able to control it in that mm -hmm. way. Um, an ebook is probably about sixty-five dollars would be the average, and that is based on limited use too. So it's like you can use it maybe ten times or something, and then you got to buy another one. Hmm. And that depends on the publisher, and there's we have very little say in that. But we've been advocating very strongly for them to be more friendly towards libraries. Right. How has the DVD use gone over the years compared to like streaming? Is it is? <laughs> I'm just curious, is the DVD use dropping and streaming going up? Or? It was interesting. So DVD use for us was, has yeah. been like pretty steady. Most libraries yep. has been dropping. Um, although I have to say, hmm. very sadly, one of our patrons who was our, a huge DVD borrower, I mean, he'd borrow stacks like multiple times a week. He'd come in for a stack of DVDs. He passed away recently. So I'm going to, our DVD circulation is definitely going to drop <laughs> this year. Um, we miss you, Miguel. He was wonderful <laughs> to us. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, I'm, I am noticing a decrease in, oh. um, in DVD circulation and streaming is going up. That's um, what, yeah, so that yeah. is the trend. Um, I suspect if you had demographic info, you'd probably see probably older usage on the DVDs. Definitely. And, then, yeah. and it also depends on the, the towns too. A lot of, um, we find a lot of our patrons who come to us from Conway and other places where um, internet service is not as fast or as accessible as it should be are borrowing a lot more DVDs whereas people who live in towns like Sunderland that are fortunate to have good internet service and that kind of access Got sick of lessons. buffering the net. Yeah, Netflix exactly. Problem. Or like you'll, you'll notice <laughs> students too. I mean, it's definitely a, an economic um, yeah. issue as well. Um, yeah. People who cannot afford cable or internet um, definitely borrow DVDs from us a lot more. Does the CW Mars license prevent you from having a two-tiered cost structure with regard to in-town and out-of-town? I know you don't charge, but can you? 
we are required to offer uh, that's, free that's, that's library. my official Bruce Bennett yeah. question. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're required to provide free <laughs> access to all uh, Massachusetts residents. So Got we it. could charge an out-of-state fee, mm -hmm. but for okay. anyone in Massachusetts, doesn't matter what town you live Got in, it. we need to provide for your library services to be a certified library. There's and that answer. enables our patrons yeah. to go to other libraries and, and have the same courtesy. Perfect. We could we could what, be a mm -hmm. private library and, and kick everyone out, you know, and charge fees and whatnot, but then our patrons wouldn't have access to other public libraries in Massachusetts. Totally get it. I was forwarded that question. Okay. <laughs> so, so, Catherine, I, I, something earlier you said that if, if you bought a copy of Matt Christopher's playing left field, mm -hmm. it, you could turn that book out for the next 30 years. So, mm -hmm. so uh, a young student that would go to the library could pick that out of the reading section, read it for 30 years, and, you would, and that would be it. So how, do, how does the library um, professionals what do they think about you buy an ebook, right, for seventy five dollars, and you only get to use it ten times? I know. So that so the how, publishers. How do you guys deal with that? We're we're upset with it, and we we write to publishers often. We advocate as best we can. CW Mars is advocating on our behalf. Western Massachusetts Library Advocates are advocating for us. Um, American Library Association is advocating. This is a national problem, worldwide problem with publishers and they're saying well a book gets used and it's going to get damaged and you'll have to buy a new one but books last for 30 I mean most they can books last a long time. can last a long time maybe not children's but most most books can and the, an ebook could last forever and it could be you know it could be used forever with without any issue you know not enough within reason within right. reason it's the but not to definitely more than 10 times um, but they're but the publishers are saying well we have to find a way for this for us to make money on this and if it lasts right. forever then we don't right. make any money on it. Right. it yeah it messes with their profit model because it, because there is a lot of there's a big drop in book sales too so they're looking for any way they can to cut and that's it, the same problem in the music industry any kind of content creation the similar problems. Exactly, and it's not exactly library friendly because we extend the product for free right. to yeah. our patrons, and so there, there is a little bit of a, a conflict. Yeah, hit us with some vitriol. No, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're, it's ironic just because they don't have to make the expense of buying ink, <coughs> paper, yep. and Your physical bindings. creation costs are less. So that, yeah. that drops, but I mean, it just seems like it's planned obsolescence built into media. It is. Uh -huh. it, 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 they're very clear about it too. <laughs> it's, good, good you know. way to it. Well, it's like any you know, if you purchase any music in electronic form, carefully look at your agreements because you can't pass that on to anybody. So, in other words, you, you know, you've got a record collection, you die or whatever, that can be passed on. But the electronic version, you you cease to exist. So does your license. Mm -hmm. Fair. So that's. And, and again, I. I, I still think the the individual that created that book needs to be compensated mm -hmm. for that. And I'm not I'm and just like if you create music you should be compensated for that music as well. But the whole thing about a library that that's I I just I just I struggle with that a little bit. I know and honestly that's a big reason why I wouldn't purchase ebooks for a long time is like, well, we get them through CW Mars. I'm not paying sixty, you know, I'm not paying sixty five dollars for an ebook. But at this point, there is a demand. Our patrons want it. Um, I think we should, you know, provide them with with what they want access to. I, yeah. I, I, I and again, thank you for sharing. I I didn't realize that that was happening. I, I, think, yeah, I don't think that's I don't think that's. If you want a really long story, I can yeah. tell you about Macmillan Publishers and their ebook <laughs> model, which I'm very angry about. <laughs> that would be another another meeting, maybe. <laughs> Keep going forever about that. Curiosity: There's not uh, additional fees for different types of electronic reading devices for you know for one brand versus a different brand. You don't have to have separate kind of. Yes, you compassion. do. Yeah. Uh, so a Kindle is a is a Kindle version is a certain ebook version and then there's the everything else version so it's the amazon okay, proprietary so ebook version yeah so you, you should technically buy two different kinds of ebooks if you want to provide it for every you know for those who have kindles and those who don't so is that something that we do then 
I will um, if I am if I'm buying an ebook and I and I can actually log in and I can see who's on hold for what and what model they're on hold for, so I can I can get that data. So I will buy based on based on the demand. Well, that's hugely frustrating, but thank you. Yeah, sorry. No, no, <laughs> Got a little off topic. No, no, on the contrary. I think it's important to have these opportunities to communicate to people who don't necessarily participate uh, widely in the library and we we'll would wonder, well, wait a minute, why am I? So, thank you for sharing. Uh, end of expenses, right? We got a little bit set aside for, set aside for operating expenses and then some license fees, uh, ebook. A little bit of expansion, well, a little bit of accommodation, I don't call it expansion, accommodation of programs. I captured that correctly. Yeah, it's just um, essentially we're, we'd like to buy the same amount of stuff. Yep. Um, it's just what we're buying is a little different and based on based on what's being used by our patrons and requested. Got it. Thanks so much. Welcome. Okay, staffing. Yeah, so um, we, I would like to say our, our request that we put in this year is based on what we expect the personnel committee to put forward. Mm -hmm. um, I am meeting with the personnel committee tomorrow, so I will have a better sense of what they actually plan to put forward, but this is our, our best guess at that. And so um, last year, the personnel committee had a salary survey, um, and they brought everyone up to the, um, the recommended minimum of a salary range um, for, um, for employees of each position. Um, so we were very grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you to the town for allowing that to happen. It's made a huge difference in the life of our staff. We're really, really grateful for that increase. Um, this year, we're also asking for a, a sizable increase for um, support staff salary. Um, and that is because we have three employees who have been, um, who've been working for the library for um, over 15 years, um, two of which have been here for over 20 years. Um, and so the personnel committee was in talks about having, you know, that salary range essentially be uh, within, you know, considering like a 10 year range or so. Um, so all of these employees essentially should be at the top of that range um, of what the recommended salaries are. Um, so we're asking for those increases for three positions. Um, for the, the fourth support staff member, she's been here for one year. Um, we're just asking for a 3% a increase, cost of living increase for that, um, that employee as well as our substitute um, librarians as well. Um, and then for the library director salary, um, I will have been here for five years um, starting this July, so I essentially put myself in the middle of that, that salary range. But this is, of course, um, we will go with whatever the personnel committee decides. Um, this is just based on the data from the survey that they had and what they had expressed an interest in doing last year. So, Catherine, can I ask on the one person who has been employed for a year? Yes. Can I ask where that person lines up in the scale? Middle, bottom, top? You, you know what I'm saying? Bottom. So, everyone, all employees were brought to the bottom of the, the scale. Okay. So, so, she's at the bottom, and they were asking. So, for it's her. not like super bottom? No. <laughs> no, every. Bottom the competitive bottom. bottom. Yeah. Right. So she's, she is making the same rate as the employees who have been here for 20-plus years. <laughs> Super bottom. I, I, and again, I just, and I don't want us to get back into having to try to re, redo it again. To, does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> After getting to the bottom, I don't want to hire somebody below the bottom and have to bring that person back up. No, everyone who will be hired will be hired based on the that salary. Salary? At the, yeah, at the, based on the, those salaries. And everyone, they, she was employed at the time when, when this went into effect. Um, mm. so, but, so that's why she's at the she's at the, that minimum recommended range of the salary study. So Mr. Personnel Committee. Yeah. How, how do you ensure the salary schedule that Catherine's looking at stays current? Well, the only way to do that is you're going to have to periodically go back out and keep polling your peer groups because you've got to be able to, you can't, you can't do it and then just walk away from it. You know, I, I mean? guess that's to, my point. Yeah. That's, so we have to, we have to, you know, set a time. Have you talked about say, that? Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, you know, whether it's like, say, every three years, whatever, you know, X number of your period, you've got to go back and re-poll, which is why it would be fabulous if 
everybody would contribute to the FERCOG's database of all this information because it is a Do you think you get good data from the FERCOG <coughs> database? It would be it, nice do to. Do you think it's consistent data? Because actually somebody at the last yeah. FERCOG meeting hmm. had talked about that. It's not. And it's and and it's it's a painful it's far more painful than it ought to be to be able to get this information. <laughs> I'll say after having gone through this. Is there one? Are you you contracted? Is your position contracted? Yes, or is I have it? a one-year contract okay, with the Board of thought. Library Trustees. That's what I thought. Okay. So using the contract. survey that's here, mm -hmm. contract employee. Go ahead. I was I was just wondering. So so one hundred eight. Um, Master and Law, they, Section 10, Chapter they, 108, or Section 108. They negotiate, yes. Um, so in the library director is the only contracted position in the library. You have some pretty strong people that are, to get you uh, be, able, be able to work a contract for trustees. Right. Trustees, yeah. They must be, on the whole statewide, trustees must be pretty powerful to put that kind of pressure on the legislators to allow you to negotiate a contract. Usually, it's well, town administrators, so and that's, police chiefs, police chiefs. Yeah. I mean, it's fire chiefs. The negotiation is really based on what, what the personnel committee and the finance committee and the select board decide. You know, it, like it, there's not much room for negotiation. Oh, so, subject subject to appropriation, but yeah, yeah I, was, exactly. I was just talking so about not, the power, the power like, of the state <laughs> library to be able to <laughs> be able to have a contract. Oh yes, that's for that position. For uh, for a position is difficult because like. Mm -hmm. Town clerk can't have a contract. Mm -hmm. I have a question regarding, and it's a comparison between the survey, which the town clerk made sure to present with us, uh, and your ask. So I'm looking at one of the positions that's listed at currently $22 an hour, uh, proposed is $27 an hour, 25% uh, increase, and yet the survey has median max at $25.40. So what's the ask? I'm sorry. So the the salary the the study that I was working on, the maximum was twenty seven fifty. Yeah, I've got so. one here that's median max, average max across the survey, and that is from a little over a year ago. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, in the case of one of the positions at the library. It's uh, average max is twenty two fifty nine. Median max is twenty five seventy. We're clearly short over time. I understand that. We're currently paying twenty two dollars an hour, which is the average max, and the ask here is twenty seven fifty, which is well above the twenty five forty median max as part of the survey. So, how does the decision get made? I'm a little confused because I don't have the, the okay. survey in front of me. I I'm sorry. I thought it was. Yeah, I'm just curious. Where, how, well, I'm curious where the numbers where the numbers came up. Yeah, I mean, so they've been. It was the top. That was the top of the scale from at least my understanding of it. Okay, so I got a two sets of columns. Like I said, average max, median max. Mm -hmm. I'll use again a, a position that's here, top of uh, your submission for long-term staff, and the median max is uh, 2540. So I never, right here. that's actually not the, the survey that I, well, I you had, got the I bonus a, survey. I had a different nice one. job. It, 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 had a, it had a, a range recommendation okay, based on the position. So I'm sorry. I'm no, not no, working trouble. with the same data as it's you. It's not meant, <laughs> not meant to be a gotcha question. Last personnel committee meeting. I think you had the older version of it. Okay. Yeah. So, I never received the, they, they'll have tomorrow. I won't be there tomorrow, but they'll have, um, the current. Okay. They show the current version. Great. Right, I'd love to have a copy of that. We looked at I'm that sorry. and we were like, ooh, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, we have some survey and some ask work to do. Uh, my next question is, how do, how do we, we, we've made a series of moves over the last three years with respect to library staff, made yes. some adjustments all the way through, and it's, yes. it's something that the board has gone to bat for. But when we hit the ceiling, when does it end? It doesn't. Lauren just shook her head. At some point, it has to end, right? The job has a value. So it's the, at the max. So Whatever. yeah, so we're trying to get, you know, our employees have been there for 20, so we'll, we'd like to get them to the max, and then we'd hope they'd get cost of living increases, and if the scale gets adjusted at any point, it would be adjusted with that, but that, I mean, that's the maximum they've been. 
or your surveys every five years are going to say, hey, exactly. the, the range is now. Now it's bumped up a little bit. So. Or if you keep and, up with your cost of living, then maybe the, you, that goes up and you happen to be right at the right place because you've been could keeping be. up. Right. And the, the cost of living, we utilize that formula. Yep, we do have a formula. Totally get that. So, so David, yeah. it was, is, is, is the intention that, is it the intention would be that we would pay the max? Is yeah, that the intention? Is that the, is the that, in the room. Yep. is that the intention? After We're 20 years of service, I think. I would hope, well, I would hope so. Let's, let's lump <laughs> things into two groups. Though. As a general rule, philosophically, we're targeting the middle. We're not excluding, but we're targeting, you know, we want to try to get everybody and make sure everybody is at least at the medium point of the peer group. You know what I mean? Um, but then we're also trying to look at people who are in a position for 10 years or more as a separate subset because we don't have steps or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And unless you come up with a true, you know, like a, a review and performance system, you mm -hmm. need some way to be able to compensate folks. So that's one of the other things that we're looking at. So the trap there is if I just go about, get by for 20 years, I can stay right at the top. As well, that would be under the assumption that you target the top, but, we, we, or if you get just, to the top. We just heard we're targeting the top. Right. And that, well, and based on years in service. That's one of the, the things that, that I mentioned lead, too, I is to that it. you need to have some kind of performance in mm -hmm. there too. Do you know what I mean? Because I will and that's say been we, one of the... Yeah, we, we do performance evaluations each year. All of my employees are high performing, I would say. I don't have, especially for our long-term employees, they've been doing a very good job for a very long time. They, they definitely are deserving of a merit increase as well. So, you, and, and again, this, mm -hmm. and this always... This is the unfortunate. We it's, this is how we have to have this conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's say typically a town town administrator, um, Do this. in one town over makes one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. So that's the yeah. top of the yes. thing. So should our town administrator make one hundred and fourteen thousand, or should? Well, <laughs> well so that depends on who you ask. Well, and, and again, well, but it, your, the different. survey. But, took data from all these towns and recommended right. a range for Sunderland Correct. based on that data. So it's not saying that this is what a librarian doing the same position, this is what the, this is what the person in committee put together, you know, in their, in their study put together as a, a sure. recommended range. Right, in other words, you get your peer group and then here's, here's the well, range and then. The peer group is throughout outlier. And you should to get to your medians, yes. absolutely right, and your averages, no doubt about that. Yeah, so it's not, right. it's not, I'm not comparing these salaries to anything. I'm just going based on mm -hmm. a recommended range from, for the, t that was recommended for Town of Sunderland employees in these positions. Totally understand the advocacy. We're trying to understand and, 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 the mechanism, because okay, we have to go to and, town and, meeting and, I, and look I, at, go ahead. Look, this is the most, this, this is the, Unfortunately, we can't right. do this on the political, on the national scale. So you know, we can't even do it on the state scale. Right. But we should be able to do it at least on on our have a conversation about how we get or how things are done. And that's the only thing I'm trying to advocate is that is that we have a discussion. So, and 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 mm -hmm. and I don't know if in and, and, and again. When you when you look at the salary, what are we Sorry. what are we saying? I mean, so we look at peers, but right. is that is but maybe we don't look at a peers. You look at Hadley. Hadley, their tax rate is such such it is, and and they got a Route Nine, so, so they may be able to afford to pay more than we can. How does how is that taken into account? And are we striving to be the best paid so that people? That, that's a conversation. Yep. And, and we went through that whole struggle when we tried to pick the peers. because yeah. we, So we've already kind of gone through that part of it. Anyway, yeah. Because you try, right, you know what I mean? Because there were some towns in there that were, there was one town in there, I forget the, I don't know if it was, well, it, it doesn't matter the town, but it was very similar demographically in all aspects except for its physical location. And it was out, and that one ended up getting tossed out. Was because. It Barstow. It might have been Sheffield, yeah. Sheffield. Or, or but right, you know, Barstow. you could find tons right. of towns on the Cape 
but it's not in an area where you would be competitive for somebody looking for a job. Sure. Nobody's going to drive from Barnstable or Sheffield to work here. I mean, not nobody, but 98.7% of the people, let's say. That long drive that you have coming from <laughs> Sheffield now. Yeah, yeah you know Sorry. what I mean? So, so you have to be reasonable and you have to look at a lot of different factors. And then also one of them being, you know, what's your competitive job market geographical area? And okay. that has to be one of them. So then, you, so then you've got your, your peer group, and then you have to periodically review that because you, you, know, you can't just do it and walk away. And the idea was, was we first get everybody up to the minimum, and then we try to shoot to get to the median of it. But we also have to look at people who have been in, and this is kind of like a group we're separating out, like those who have been in their positions for 10 years or more. So, and it's a tough balancing act, trying to, Oh, trying I to figure all that out. I don't, I don't think it, it's... That's why and I, I, even among the personnel committee, there has been a number of heated discussions. Sure. I can guarantee you that about it. So, um, Circling back from the methodology hmm. uh, to the library, head of youth services, head of adult services, are the responsibilities the same? Essentially, there, there is a, a little bit of difference. Um, head of youth services works more hours than head of adult services. Right. So they have some based on just when they're at the library, like she does our interlibrary loan. That's not sure. a normal use sure. services. So by job description, the tasks are the same because you're proposing the pay grade to be the same. Um, and that was based on... I get the survey part. Yeah, that's based, on that. the, that's based on the survey, 100%. I'm internal, like, internal discussions, I mean, is it really the same job? I have electricians I who do is, different things and they don't get paid the same. I think it is, I mean, it's different age groups essentially and mm -hmm. whereas um, head of youth services is picking up our interlibrary loan, our head of adult services does all of the cataloging for us. Responsibilities. Yeah, so. Okay. Um, I have to ask. There's definitely, there are definitely differences. I have the job descriptions, I'd be happy to provide them to you. The personnel committee should already have them, but. Okay. Um, Again, I have to ask. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, and if, if the personnel committee wants to do, you know, based on each job individually mm -hmm. rather than just department heads in the library, right. then that's a. I'm happy to have that discussion too. But I'm really trying to be a team player and go with what the town has decided they they want to do for our employees. Cool. Thanks so much. Questions? No, I th I think it's a, a discussion we have to have. You know, finance committee. What do you think? Oh, the it certainly is easily confusable if you only get the small subset. Right. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry, I didn't. That list, but <laughs> it's also admirable that you're incre uh, asking for the max increases for most of your employees. But uh, well, so this is, I mean, you brought everyone to the minimum last year, and then the goal was to consider longevity. You know, the personnel committees. Thought with, we're intending at that time to go for longevity. They've been here for 20 years. I mean, we either do a big jump now or we do an even bigger jump later. I mean, it's just we've got to have some kind of structure. And if, if the personnel committee decides they want to do like a extra percentage on top of a cost of living for every year or something, that's great. I'm happy to go with that. But they've been here for 20 years. If we had had this plan in place when they started, they would be at the max. Fair point. I feel like they should be there now. Great, thanks. Let's talk about your salary. Because yes. you're the last one. Oh, this will be the easy one. This is the easy one, right? <laughs> I just put myself in the middle of that range, but if that range is off, then I apologize. Okay. Um, no. But I put myself, because I will have been here for five years. We evaluate on every year. Right. And it is a, it's a one year contract, so the Board of Trustees evaluate me each year, and then we they decide if they want to renew the contract. They're good reviews, by the way. Uh, good. <laughs> I would expect. Right. Yeah. Right? Just want to make sure. <laughs> we would be very lucky to have her for 10 years. Okay, questions regarding salary? Director's salary? I don't know. I, I, fe I fear we'd tread down the same path regardless. So, it's salaries. Um, so what cool, awesome things is the library gonna do this year? Oh, lots of things.
things. See, <laughs> this is your shameless plug time. Yeah, so we, that point we, um, we received a federal grant, um, an LSTA grant, Library Services Technology Act grant, um, and the grant is called Access for All, but we're, in particular, we're trying to improve our access for people on the autism spectrum. Um, I learned from Rachel Kidder, our school librarian, that 5.2% of students at Sunderland Elementary School are on the autism spectrum. Um, it's not always visible, but I feel like um, we don't see too many of them in the library, and I'd really want to make sure we're welcoming space for everyone in our town. Um, so um, th thanks to this grant, we've been able to add a sensory toy collection oh, to nice. the library, which I'm really pleased about. These are um, toys, comfort objects, learning tools that um, circulate. Um, they can be used in the library, of course, but um, they've been circulating as far as Worcester and Springfield are using pretty regularly. Wow. Our own patrons are using them all the time. Nice. Schools are using them. Teachers are using them. We're really pleased with that. Um, we've also been adding um, a lot of programs just for people on the autism spectrum. I've opened up the library when we're closed for people as kind of um, on the autism spectrum, just because it's a quieter time. They don't have to, it's a good opportunity for them to get used to visiting the library um, during a quieter time when they don't have to worry about, you know, if they have vocalizations or anything like that. It's, um, you know, it's a time just for them to get used right. to it. Create a social story too, which is another way for people to get used to the library before they visit. We're really proud of that. It's on our website. Um, we've also been adding special um, special programs. We have um, a children's author, Cami McGovern, coming. Um, she um, worked for Whole Children for a long time. She was on their their governing board, um, and she writes mostly books, um, including characters with disabilities, um, especially people on the autism spectrum. So she brings those characters to life in a really relatable way. We're really proud to have her coming. Um, and we've also been in, invigorating our collection um, of books. So nonfiction books um, on autism spectrum as well as um, fiction books that feature um, characters on the autism spectrum. So we're very happy about that too. Um, but the most important part piece of this is that we've been um, getting a lot of staff training too for our staff and how to, um, how to serve these patrons, but really it's improving our service to all of our patrons, so we're really pleased with that. Did that come out of demand or come out of um, understanding that the opportunity was out there? The opportunity was out there. I, I realize there's a large portion of children in particular in Sunderland on the autism spectrum. It's on the rise nationally, whether that's because right. of increased awareness or an actual increase in the, um, you know, in the spectrum. That's a, you know, another debate, but it, there's definitely a need for it, um, and it's, We've seen a lot more people coming into the library now. We're really happy about it. Um, I just think it makes us a more welcoming space for everyone, and that's always our goal. So. Makes sense. And work with the elementary school. You cited them as a statistic. Is there a mechanism yeah. for interacting with Ben or the school committee about them? Absolutely. So I meet pretty regularly with Rachel Kidder, the school librarian. Right. We're really happy about that. Um, I'm presenting at a, um, a staff meeting coming up in a couple of weeks nice. um, just to kind of let them know about the library um, and to talk about this grant, but really to talk about other services because we can get foreign language books. Um, you know, if, if you have an ESL student, um, there's all sorts of things the library can do for our teachers that That's they may not be aware of. So we're really excited <coughs> by that opportunity. I also created um, kind of brochures um, advertising number one our services to people on the autism spectrum, but also the sensory toys and also all the various collections too. So those were all um, nice. get distributed to the teachers, so they Great. should each be aware. I hope. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks so much for that. You're welcome. You want to talk briefly about capital? Yes. Unless you guys have questions about programs. Just overwhelmed with awesomeness. So we'll, we'll go right to capital. I know. That was just a little taste of all the awesomeness that I have to offer. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we have an introduction to mindfulness tonight. Uh, we're oh, nice. partnering with. Um, Why are we here? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> take, so I'll take a moment, take a deep breath. But, um, we're partnering with Tilton Library of Deerfield and the Waitley Public Library to offer a six-week series of mindfulness for all ages. Nice. So um, Sunderland's doing mindfulness for kids, um, Tilton is doing um, mindfulness for teens, and then Waitley's going to be doing mindfulness for senior citizens. Right. So it's nice to kick off for that. Nice. Series. That's a good program. Yeah. <laughs> Cancel next week's meeting. Beer. Mindfulness. <laughs> one of my favorite jokes. What did the hot? What did the guru say? What did the guru say to the hot dog vendor? Make me one with everything. It's a hot dog oh. joke. See? <laughs> we need a rim you, shot. You find your weenie mobile. Yeah, yeah. Working on it. So. <laughs> he's going right to the millstone right now. He's already. He's plotting right away. Thanks so much. My, my there you yeah. go. A weenie cart in front of us. 
I did, my friend just bought one, so. <laughs> yeah, and he bought a second one, too, because it was a good deal. <laughs> I oh, go, boy. Okay. It's a heck of a business model. <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, so, handicap access operator, is that a direct replacement? It is a direct replacement. Yep. Um, and so, it's, it is working now, but eventually it's going to die, and we don't want to get stuck as mm. we did the previous time. Yep. Um, you can hear it grinding, too, when it, when it opens. Oh, wow. this, this plays another area of import as the town elections have moved to the library wow. for this year anyway to try out. So, yes. an important piece. Yes, absolutely. Acoustical panels. It's a library. It's supposed to be quiet. Mm -hmm. It should be. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is for the community room. Wow. Um, Beautiful, like beautiful large dome ceilings, which unfortunately means there's quite an echo in there. Right. Um, and so we would like to install some acoustic panels um, to make, and that's a big accessibility piece as well. Um, for people who are hard of hearing, it is extremely challenging to hear what's going on. And if you have more than one person talking at a time in there, like if you have a community discussion, it's it's deafening. I mean, mm -hmm. it just really is, is loud and inaccessible. So it's very hard for people I'll never forget we had a um, we had a, a representative to talk about climate change and there was a woman who was hard of hearing. She was literally sitting in front of him and she was cupping her hear ears to be able to hear him speaking into a microphone. I mean it's just a challenging situation and right. there's really only way to remedy it is to dampen that echo and that's through acoustic panels. Did you guys have oh, a acoustician look at it or a designer or how'd that work out? Yeah, we've had several different um, yeah. designers and folks who do acoustics and then as well as companies that do the installation sure. um, look at it and give options um, obviously this is like our best guess at what is sure. gonna work um, but we it will whatever we do is gonna make an improvement so um, if this works in the community room we would like to look at doing it for the rest of the life like the library lobby as well also has this echo problem I was in a public space yesterday and their approach this is hard stone walls and plaster ceilings and they decided that the easiest thing to do is to commission a piece of uh, linen work that was suspended and that's how they dampened. Uh, I would also note if you are going to be increasing accessibility to autism spectrum, Bingo. people having right. acoustic absorption is going to be really crucial. Absolutely. Oh. Nice. Brilliant. Paneling. And then heat pumps. Continuing yeah. on? Hey. As always, so um, a couple weeks ago I found out the heat pump that serves um, the director's office in the mechanical room is broken. That's going to be replaced with our so capital funds from last year. last one on the list, right? Um, no, it's not. So that would be <laughs> with number five of the 614 heat pumps that we have. Um, and, you know, they're all 16 plus years old now. So, they, I mean, they're at the end of their lifespan. So we're asking for funds for an addition. that The $10,500 is one. Mm -hmm. um, one heat pump. And so would you have this set aside, is, I mean, say this, is this set aside for an immediate repair in fiscal 21, or is this set aside in lieu, I'm sorry, in anticipation of a repair at some point in 2021? In anticipation of right. one. We, okay. We've have been requesting these these funds yep. um, regularly, so the, right. the heat pump that's broken right now, that's going to come out of the FY20. Got it. Um, Request. And so the reason I ask is next year I'm sure one is going to die. <laughs> the reason I ask is for people to understand the money from capital appropriations sits in capital until it's needed. It's not like your, your, your trustees are going to run off and buy ebooks. It's not going to happen. It sits over in capital, and if a heat pump dies, they simply transfer the money. And we're very grateful for that because you never know when one's going to die, but when it goes, right. you so, need to replace it immediately. It's a clean mechanism. And I use the example of transferring it from capital to expense because historically, not the library, but other, other municipalities and municipal agencies have used that mechanism. And that's something that we've girded against for, guarded against for the last 15 years. So capital is capital. So, so the heat pump, can it be taken out, rebuilt, and put... For a spare, or is it you take uh, it out and you toss it? You toss it. What's happened is the air handling units, they refer to the heat pumps, the, the air handling units above the ceiling, mm -hmm. and there's not a direct, direct replacement uh, currently. They've been being rebuilt at their compressor stations or controls work. They've actually, actually taken physically one out, or they're rebuilding them all in place, I guess is a question. I know last year that price jumped because the series didn't exist anymore. Yeah, so it's it's the new series. Got it. And they physically, so if they can repair it, Correct. they will 
will repair it. Right. But for the most most of these issues that Chop we're having, the they got to take the yeah, whole thing take out. The whole thing out. And if they, they have to take out the ceiling, yep. if they have to take out some of the ductwork in order right. to get to it, um, right. that adds to the cost. Right. right. And they did factor that into the quotes that right. I've been receiving. Because I thought we're on sort of a program to periodically, like, because we knew that you know, you've got a life expectancy of X. Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. So do we take it out and just toss them, or Chuck do we? It. Yeah. Why would we do that? Why wouldn't we just save them? That's and, a good question. And if, and reuse them for parts and or. Can we get the correspondence copy again from uh, Conroy last time from last year where they said that they were not worth the rebuild any longer? That would be helpful. Sure. And then that was part of the capital proposal from last year. And it's not, I don't have it in my binder. Sorry. I may well. I, yeah, no, I don't no. apologize. I may have it somewhere. Okay. I hope it made it to the shredder. But I definitely have it. I'll <laughs> send it to you. <laughs> it was so last year. So I'll, I'll talk to Mr. Conway. Yeah. Um, but I don't, if, if you're, so are you just waiting for one to fail before you change it out? Yeah, or run, you, they're, run to, you, they're run to fill the PM, the yeah. PM program. But the compressor sections, and essentially once the compressor and the auxiliary electric heater, it's a duct heater. Mm. Once that's done, you get the heat cool with the DX coil, the compressor, which picks up slack if it needs to for cooling and electric in use if it needs to for heating. The rest of it's a box with a blower. Mm. No, I'm just saying. I, and Thankfully, we've never had a coil leak. <laughs> That's what just happened. That's <laughs> Did it? Well, oh, we, no. we would, we would be leaking. We'd be leaking water, not glycol. That's correct. Right. Yeah. So, well, yeah. the water leaked into the glycol. That's yeah. right. Oh. Or whatever it is. The water leaked into something where the water's not supposed to be. That's what happened. Okay. For this one. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> well, I was just I was just saying that if you can, when when stuff gets towards the end of its life expectancy, as long as you still have some and if it's working, I would I would save Keep it the because. Side. because yeah. That's I would just hmm? I always like to have at least one or two in case I have to use it good in point. an emergency. Can we keep one near tip top and have it? Yeah, good well, and these, I'm, I'm sure Mr. Conway would like to make money, but I will say these ones, if they can be repaired as as they are, they are repaired. Yeah. Yeah. But um, when they when they die, they are replaced with a new model, it. and that we we don't replace anything until it's broken. And this this budget line, this budget request is for a direct replacement, knowing that repair could be a, could be facilitated. Yeah, exactly. And we're just it's like we're planning for the worst case scenario. And so this so the the ten thousand five hundred includes if you have to remove part of the ceiling, if you have to redo the ductwork, that sort of thing. Got it. And that was it for for capital for the library. That was it. Easy one. I like that. I like that. Uh, so when do we decide to replace it? To a new system? Yeah. Or, well, I guess well, I'm, I'm saying, I mean, when you get to like 60% of no, the cost of rebuild, right. do you repair right. or do you keep repair no matter what? Or, I mean. A blower is a blower. Compressor is a compressor. Right. Yeah. So if like Good if question. you get, if I'm, I'm looking at it, I'm saying it's 15 years old and life expectancy, or 16 years old, life expectancy is 15 and mm -hmm. I got... 14 of them. What? Well, and, a variety of stages of life, but, or rebuild. Right. Yeah, it's a good question. Maybe it's a million dollar capital project in a few years. Just wondering. Hmm. No, I'm not, I'm not. I know. Saying anything except maybe it's a million dollar project in a, in a few years. And it's an efficiency project. Look, maintenance, maintenance is a necessary evil. Yep. I don't want to be rebuilding library, town hall, elementary school, Public safety complex all at the same time. Absolutely, you're going to maintain. You're going to maintain. Absolutely right. Now it may well be worth may well be worth that survey again. I I think it's important to maintain stuff. So. Your debt goes away in 2021. We could just borrow another million and fix the whole thing. Although your building's great, so. It's yeah. I would say it would. It wouldn't cost a million for to do everything we could ever possibly want to do in that library. Would not be. It's in great shape and it suits our needs. You're well. way too practical. Lauren's <laughs> oh, sure, going. Sure. I'll take. Oh, I'll take the I'm million. Really <laughs> Except for those windows, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, half a million. Half a million. Exactly. Well, for the maybe if we do acoustics in every single inch of the place. Yeah. There you go. You're working out very well. Add it up. But. Outside of the shameless program plugging, any questions of us? Besides our, you know, unyielding support for the library over the years, and thank you for that. No, no problem. I'm just curious what the 
if they're there's, all if smiling there's a plan behind you now. timeline for the um, for the budget, I know obviously everything changes last minute and stuff right. like that. But do you guys have a timeline for when the budget will your your version of the budget so will be available? School is the next. So our revenue piece, we have to wait for the house fund to come out and understand where that revenue piece fits in. As you know, we take the revenue piece. Uh, probably more seriously than the expense side because you can control one yes. you can't necessarily control the other uh, that said uh, those those are usually out the first part of March we expect something relatively soon uh, we also have the elephant in the room which is the education budget and that hearing is in two weeks should talk no, wait, about Peter should 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 talk talk about Peter that way Peter's here <laughs> I know the elephant in the room <laughs> he's only a third of the elephant in the room the other two pieces of the elephant are of you know up in uh, up in uh, Turner's and across the river uh, we're hearing those we're hearing from uh, two of those uh, next week and then Franklin Tech we have their assessment so I would say within three weeks Thank you. At least gives us a framework yeah. to just have to start our discussion. Great. And keep up the fine work. Obviously, participation is going well. Uh, you have high de you know, demands for the services, which means the services are nothing but uh, spectacular, and that's a good thing. Well, thank you. And please um, be in touch with me if you guys have any questions Great. and need any extra information. I'll send you that document. Thanks later. so much. Appreciate so thank that. You. Thanks. 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 What do you think? Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Up. We've got minutes of uh, February 10th and motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. On February 10th, the highway department was in. Yep. And the fire department was in. We had some board updates. Okay, motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. Uh, George is looking for. Snow and, ice. Snow and ice deficit spending. That is uh, 10,600 of the 14,000 appropriation is spent on wages. He's requesting authorization to spend excess of 10,000 of available snow and ice uh, wage appropriation. So an additional 10,000. So again, we're talking about our base appropriation. Right. And I know it's, it sounds like we're out of winter based on the birds no, singing and the trees not. budding and all that, but it's still not quite there. Uh, is there a nope. motion to, uh, is there a discussion on 10000 for snow and ice wages? Materials must be in, in fine shape. Did Jeff, you check with George in the morning just to make sure? I think you just check with George salt. at some point. <laughs> yes. okay. Check with George at some point? Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Three to zero. Ten thousand for additional snow and ice wages. Again, not materials. Do, do, do. Thank you. Thanks so much, Elliot. Thank you, Francis. Thank you. Do, do, do. Okay. Uh, how about how about we do appointments? Right. We got from Delta Sand. Uh, public wares for 2020, TJ Conroy, Amanda Gothier, Melinda Gibbons, and Jane Kaczynski. All those, in, is there discussion? Motion. Second. Move to appoint for the public wares. All those in favor? Aye. Three to zero, please. Do, do, do. I see some lovely red lines. We have a copy here of our commissioners. 24, yeah, so March 9th, there's a public hearing here. It's important to bear in mind about sewer uh, rates uh, for septage. Uh, they were brought forward to the board a number of years ago. And I'm sorry, a number of weeks ago, we have had the same rate for a number of years. And because this impacts the public, we wanted to put this in the form of a public hearing. 
This is in this room. It is on the 9th of March at 7 p.m. And we're going to discuss uh, the wastewater treatment plant septage rates. Uh, they're currently eight dollar. I'm sorry, eight cents a gallon, up to twelve hundred. Nine cents a gallon, excess of twelve hundred. They was established in two thousand and eight. We have a recommendation from the sewer operator to increase those rates. So it's not your house rate. It's people who uh, use the septic. Uh, I'm sorry, the wastewater treatment plant for disposal of bulk septic. So that's coming up, and that's in March. We have our notice right here, March nine. And that's at 7 p.m. So if you're a hauler or anyone of interest, restaurants, those kinds of places that are using tank trucks, it's important to bear in mind that our, our costs have gone up. So that's the ninth. Uh, selectman's updates. David, you say the personnel committee? Personnel committee meeting tomorrow night. Yep. Tomorrow night. Continuing our fun work. Well, it's, it's, it's not the easiest work, but it's good work. Got to get it done. Right. Exactly. It's important. Right. Tom? Anything you want to add? Um, just like to add that uh, early voting started today. Right. Yep. It'll continue, and this is for the Democratic and the Republican primary. Correct. Um, it started today. Today, yeah. Um, the town clerk's available the remainder of this week. Um, including she's got office hours, I believe, on Friday as well. So mm -hmm. I would say that if you uh, think that you cannot get to the polls on the election day, primary day, then come down and see the town clerk and they get a ballot for you. Um, I would strongly, strongly encourage everyone that's available, that's registered to vote, to get out and vote. That will be next Tuesday, March 3rd, also known as Super Tuesday. Right. So, mark that on your calendars. And it'll be at the library, like we mentioned earlier, not at the elementary school. So, the only place has changed. Yep. You check the website, the town clerk site, town clerk's area election site for information. Anything else, Tom? <clears throat> That's it, sure. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, it's your turn. Town administrator updates. Okay. Multiple binders already. Week three. Crushing it. <laughs> yes. Uh, crushing it. Um, on Friday, I met the FurCog crew um, and was introduced to all the folks there. Oh, so nice. got a good intro to all the services they provide for us and um, are included. So that was great. Uh, we were also notified that... Due to housing production over the last couple of years, we are eligible for a housing choice community um, status with hmm. the state, which um, would make us eligible for certain grants um, hmm. that only housing choice communities are. I'm investigating what other types of requirements would be on us other than yes, we would like to be eligible for grants and get extra points on MassWorks applications and things like that. Um, if there are reporting requirements, upkeep requirements, those types of things. So um, the folks at FERCOG are looking into that, but um, it, otherwise it seems like a pretty good nice. deal. Um, uh, this week, um, thanks in large part or all part to Cindy Bennett. Um, we closed out the Community Compact IT server upgrade grant. Nice. So um, that was upgrading the server, the firewall, uh, getting the computers on a domain instead of individual workstations. Um, so we, we sent in all the remaining materials, the final report. So um, I think that that grant is closed out. And we got an email saying it was. So. I have maybe a goofy question, if I could, Jeff, uh, yeah. and, and the board. You know, we've we've done, um, as a town, uh, have done relatively well with the community compact initiatives, both sharing of resources as well as utilizing other resources from the state. That was an initiative of the baker Polito administration, right, as I like to be yeah. called. Would it make sense for us to send a letter saying, hey, here's a community compacts we participated in and the benefits that we have we have reaped uh, knowing that we've performed work? Yep. Not a thank you letter, but an update so they would under potentially use it to understand what on God's green earth that money was used for? Couldn't hurt. I think, you know, right, a little more data in there on 
on that and from an objective standpoint it would be a good thing I don't know how closely they monitor any of that feedback. But they do because, in particular, the lieutenant governor. The lieutenant governor has been out been here her a couple. That's been her That's she's right. Been, she's been out here a couple times to announce awards. In, yep. in particular, I believe she part of her thing is to visit all 351 mm -hmm. communities in the state, mm -hmm. in particular the ones that have applied for and received community compacts. So, I. I think that I think it's important that, and I would not, but I would not only address it to the governor and lieutenant governor, but I would I would uh, address it to our uh, elected state reps also, sure. state yep. senator and state. I I think it's important for them to know that um, their support of the community compact program is a good idea. Right, it's not simply ex executive order. It's also appropriations, and that's Look, a big. We, we've been here long enough, yep. um, and, and we all. And I don't know if Jeff was involved. With every every governor that comes in has their own executive thing, and, it, and right. the EO four eighteen is a Oof. perfect example because there was a heck of a lot of. It was a heavy lift. There, there was a, and and the town like Sunderland could never. We never, we ne and, and by the time we had finally finished all the requirements to be able to. The nat that administrators administrations passed, and we got a new one with our own set of things. Right. I appreciate the fact that the, the 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 governor, lieutenant governor, and the legislators have prioritized getting money to communities to allow communities to do the job. Right, and that's probably the most. It, it's better for us because we we get we're able to take that money and put it to use rapidly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a framework specific application process. Understand the needs, and and you don't have to jump through a lot of hoops to get that right. money. I right. mean, you do have to jump through some hoops, but I, Mr. Chair, I think that's a wonderful. But but yeah, also, I think it's in, important to let our legislators know right. that we appreciate the money that that they've been putting aside because they have they right. have to work with, you know, hand in hand with the yeah. uh, the governor and his. His administration. So this would be specific to uh, my, my my discussion point is specific to community compact. Yeah, yeah. I think that to would be helpful. All the community compacts that we've received. Yeah, and, I think and it was a nice simple yep. table. Here's yep. the first that we participated in as as peer a peer community, and and here are ones that we have um, applied for, gotten gotten grant rounds uh, approved and executed. I think that would be helpful yep. for a small town to simply say. Thanks. Right, especially a town that you know we're not we want to participate with resources right. like right. a larger town. And Jeff, town. the the fur cock may be able to help you with that also. Right. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to go tangential on you. But no, no, that's quite. Sure, maybe right. they can roll it up to the county level. Right. So, speaking of tangentialness, um, we were talking about heat pumps at the library and. There's an opportunity for uh, heat, pumps here. heat pumps here, um, and EverSource would cover about half the cost. Mm -hmm. So there was a um, so the you know, fuel oil thing. Yeah, so it's related to it's tied to what our, our bid would be for fuel oil, mm -hmm. at, at which is going to be coming due fairly soon. Um, we have until the end of March to make a decision in order to get the EverSource incentive, um, and it would be. Two outdoor units and then um, seven mini splits inside. So, uh, conceptually, I think it's a it's a it's a really good idea. I would like to understand the specifics about location and application before I jump, you know, head into it. Right. Right? Are they going to be roof mounted multi zone compressors with split heads? The, the Are they schematics. wall mounted? Are they going to be one on each side? I, I, think they, I thought they, they, had, they had put something it together. Was a didn't map. They, Jeff? They, yeah. they had a, yeah, it was a one of the basic one schematic of the attachments. Map. Yeah. Yep. I was looking at that. that. Okay. If you if, if wouldn't mind. Yep. If, uh, conceptually, it can certainly get behind it. You get right. heat for the shoulder seasons, you get air conditioning, and it saves you a bunch of energy. Right. And I think the driving is not so much the end of March, but my understanding of the fuel oil bids is that they get competitive, and the quicker you get in, the better rates yep. you lock in. So 
Um, and then you don't want to get then there's a thing about panel. I think like there was concern that okay if we get the mini splits and we're not using as much then you could get penalized sure. for storage. And, sure. Right. Yeah. Well, right, right now we have the most inefficient way of air conditioning this building. <laughs> you are correct. Putting putting window, window units, units in. Right. And, and, and again, it, 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 is not, it is not an efficient way to do business. The second thing is, if we go with the, the, the mini splits, we have an antiquated boiler that, mm -hmm. that could be the... Take a lot of stress off of that. Look, and, and I, just, I just know one thing. How many, how many gallons of fuel oil do we uh, designate for this building every year? A thousand. <laughs> yeah. Thousands. Thousands. Okay. Right. And I'm just saying, if people are concerned about, and, and again, I understand that you still have to produce the electricity, but, but remember how I, it's I, I, I think a, a modern modern power plant is much better at sure. at at, mo at at producing electricity um, efficiently, um, and especially with Sims mm -hmm. um, monitoring what goes up the stack. So. I, I just, I think it's better efficiently. Even for the cooling alone, we got to make some Also, we're able, we're able to bring to our community and in times of heat, we uh, community we can have this building the open to there. provide for cooling room yep. or cooling areas. And the winter we have heat as well. I just think it's a plus plus all the way around for us. Yep. And 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 we were and and we should be and we should be. Capital wise, we should be looking at replacing our boiler, anyways. Right, mm -hmm. it is on the building survey. Yeah, I, I right, and and it's and it's time. It's what four or five section boiler. That that one there is four. Yeah, so we're yeah. we're gonna there's a cost to that. Right. Okay, you want to simply vote to proceed? They have to yeah. put it in the capital yeah. budget, but we'll yeah. make a motion to Second. proceed. Okay, motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three to zero, please. There, how was that? How was the can, speed of light right so. there? <laughs> Love it. Well, no, there's just so half the cost. Every source is paying half. Right. Paying half. I mean, that's right. pretty, pretty good. Pretty quick payback. Um, pretty I guess quick payback. A, a quick follow-up is they also offer zero percent financing for two years. Is that something that we want to take advantage of, or you've got to understand? I think we have to understand the total better. total scope first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, and get those costs. Yep. Right. That's all the, you know, a lot of our electricity is now generated by solar. So there's a. We are, big we are gain there. pretty darn close to being net zero here with respect yep. to power. Exactly. We so got a $39 electric bill last month. I just signed the warrant. Yep. And so you shift the, you know, more of our heating costs over mm -hmm. to that cooling. Again, it's important to bear in mind that number, $39.50. Yep. And that's including our old inefficient methods. Right. So. Um, I guess the other thing that is not on the agenda because the one day liquor licenses are, was I had drafted um, a charge for the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Okay. I don't know if you guys wanted to review that now, next week. We can review it for the week and vote on it next. Yeah. Okay. I'll email that. Do you want yeah. physical we'll copies? Yeah, email. Yeah, email's good. Okay. Sounds good. Right, open space that allows us for application continued. We're certified currently. We have a plan, but that was done with the cog, mm -hmm. and uh, this allows us for park as well as other types of grants right. uh, with respect to uh, state applications. Also, it's a key component to uh, a key piece of the master, master plan. plan. Exactly. Yep. So Jeff, we got a one-day liquor license draft for us to review. Okay. Yes. Now, before we go with that, I, I just like to add one thing. Um, Jeff, when you get back, can you write a a letter to Mass DOT about um, the new apartments that are going in and and the traffic pattern? The traffic pattern. Oh, yeah. see that email chatter. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and again. I just it, it's a, it's a frustrating thing, but for anybody to think that that not that that area is not going to be impacted by the additional traffic that is going to be served, and, and again, it's being built. I, I I get that. We're not stopping it. I'm not trying to stop it because it, that that time is past. Right. 
but we, we do have a responsibility for the safety. And I, I understand it's Mass Highways, it's Mass Highways Road, mm -hmm. but to, to stick your head in the ground and say it's not gonna affect, right. um, it, it is. I, I mean, I can see it already at six o'clock in the morning. I can, I, I see the work, the workers just the that are trying, side, right. just trying to get in there. Yep. They can't, and I, and at, at the end of the day, guys, the, the people that work there can't get out. Right. right. So but, it's uh, going to affect. And, and technically, technically, we were told that the exit on the Plum Tree Road was simply an emergency for fire safety mm -hmm. entrance. Right. So it's, it is not a, a means of egress in, from the complex. It's onto 116. I don't see how it's going to work. Right. So, and, and again, I, I would just, and again, I, I thank DOT. We had the problem. They put the no right-hand turn yep. um, on, without, you had on a, on a red light. Um, we, they, we, we expressed our concerns about that. They put their people. And I think, for the most part, they've taken care of it by, mm -hmm. by the timing and by arrows and whatever. They they, they appear to do a good job mm -hmm. right now. Talking about this intersection here. Right? Yeah. Yes, it's so, definitely so, improved. I so agree. so they so so they put their minds together and and they worked on mm -hmm. it. I really have a concern, and I think this. I I don't, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think I'm going out on a ledge right now and saying it. I have a concern that we're going to have a problem, and and I can't. I was there the other night, and it was later at night, and the way it's lit, it's not very well lit. And we and we've talked about that before, right. also. That's a concern. And and somebody was crossing the road, and that was just a person. Okay, and and I barely saw the person. Right. So I, I think it really has to be studied, but the lighting has to be studied. The the traffic flow. Who has rights away the the traffic lanes? All that needs to be reviewed. What their plan for signage is as well, because they're going to rely on signage at some point. Mm -hmm. yep. What is it? Does it make sense? So it's, it, as you said, it's a total intersection. Two inter no, actually, Scott, I because I, plum trees. It's it's two it's yeah. two intersections. The plum tree intersection as well as the entry exit that of the, and and East Plum Tree and East Plum Tree because right you're essentially you got a four corners and a very high high use. Because going drive. from going from Plum Tree into East Plum Tree, it, they're not, not right. quite they're not job. lined up, right. so right. so they're offset. Yep. So all all of those are, and and then then they put that kind of like that island in there. Center raised. How, how many people have told you that 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 there's going to be a serious accident? There? Yeah. Right. Somebody hitting that in the dark. Right. It, it's not, and right now they have mm -hmm. barrels, but what happens when they take the barrels out? Right. Yeah. The barrels aren't really a. So I, I think we got to write a letter to Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ask for, I want to ask for a meeting time or ask for a review? You want a site visit first or you want to plan? Uh, I would, I would just ask them. I, take, I, take a look at it. Take a look at it and then they could report back to us okay. maybe. That makes sense. But I, I think it's going to be, a, and again, I, I think we need, before they start filling up and mm -hmm. they'll be putting people in there in August or, right. or before, right. we really got to address it now. They still, we still got a period of time to get something maybe worked out. Well, Great especially point. when you look at the way their occupancy plan is, it's not like a one-to-one -one ratio of units to vehicles. So. Right. I, well, David, I think you're, you're absolutely right. But I, I think a lot of things have changed since mm -hmm. the, it was originally the, right. the original traffic study. Now now they're renting beds. They were talking about 60 cars, I think, in the original 65 one. I don't cars. Think that'll happen. Right. I, I think yeah. that may change. Yep. Right. Now I did talk to the traffic. I did talk to the parking people at UMass, and and what they said is is typically it's only like twenty seven percent of the off off campus students seek parking on the university. Most of them use public transportation. That's what they said. Huh. And 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 well, the UMass parking they they keep good numbers. Sure. So I, I don't. Yeah. But even if you say twenty seven percent. That that's still a number, right. but then you talk about all the potential peace people crossing that road. Yep, yep. You know, could because I mean, if if my choice is I can get off when the bus is heading north instead of waiting for it to go all the way around to come back. back right. Guess what I'm doing? Right. So you're going to have a sizable population getting off, off. the bus. Right. Yeah. And and again, the lighting, the mm -hmm. the, the speed, the people, yep. how. 
Because the speed's 50 along that net stretch, right? It is, 50 yeah. miles an hour, yep. there, David, yes. So the pedestrian interaction as well, how are they going to handle that? Mm -hmm. Again, uh, yep. one, one of the things that I have a hard time is, is when we lost the other intersection. Yeah. Right, when, mm -hmm. when we lost I don't want to our, see that our student coming back from UMass of, right. of the family um, to Zach, and, and that that's still in my memory sure. of that period of time. And, and I hate for someone else to do a loss because I have that same loss. And, and, and you, you can almost see it happening. Right. So yeah. all the pieces are in place for it. Uh -huh. Okay. They are, Scott. You get that correspondence when DOT gets us on their radar. That's helpful. Jeff, anything else? Thank you, Scott. Uh, just the liquor license. Okay. We'll review that and take a look at it. Peter, what do you think? It's been fun filling <laughs> action pack tonight. We don't have any idea yet as to the overall, any overall sense of how the budget is shaping up here. Uh, you, yeah. expect, you, you said on the revenue side you were waiting for. So um, we're waiting for, for house budget, house budget and uh, certification of free cash. You haven't had free cash certified yet. Nope. It's in the system right now. We thought it would be done last week. We thought it would be done in November. We thought it would be done in November, yeah, yeah, yeah. Done in November but that's on us. That you mean it was it's, submitted late? It's submitted late, yep. It's been submitted now. This is the third full week. Okay. Um, do you have a sense of, you're talking about the apartment, new apartment complex down there, do you have a sense for when the new growth that that generates will work its way into the available revenue? So Maybe the assessors year, told right? us that they're assessed based on percentage of construction for this current year, and the full assessment will be coming back around at the next right. billing cycle. So next year. Let's okay, say. so how about, instead of saying it that way, because I'm having trouble making sure I understand you. Sure. Uh, 40% what, per this what percent of the value is, yeah. being, is available, will be rate available revenue? 40%. I assume that none is available now or very little in no. FY20. Correct. Right. How about for FY21? So I would venture to say somewhere in the 40% range. And then FY22, 100%? Correct. Yep. And the valuation is the. 27 million. Say again? 27 million. Thank you. So do the math and. Okay. Your personal 400 odd thousand maybe yeah, totalized. Yeah. At the yeah. end, when it's all said yeah. and done. 160 yep. for the upcoming fiscal year. Correct. Yeah, we're waiting for our numbers to kind of rattle into the bucket right now. The assessors were pretty clear uh, when they did their budget presentation, they couldn't assess on the completion of the project as it wasn't complete. So right. they could assess on what was, they could assess on what was currently complete and they have done that. So the tax bill went out based on its status currently. The fact that those units are furnished, do they assess on personal property in there? That it will be. be. Yeah. yeah. We were just be. talking about that. Okay. Um, the, 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 the assessors are very attuned, right. and they, they actually picked it up in their advertising. They're, right. they're uh, advertising very aggressive, aggressively, and that's one of the things that the assessors picked up right away. Is they're saying that they're for furnished. fully furnished apartments. No, I went read the... You know the stuff on the web about what they're advertising and what the, and you know the other thing I'm interested in is, or we're you know concerned about is is you know how many kids still at school age are going to be in there and at this point there's absolutely no way of knowing. Right. Um, and so that's you know something that's uh, we're basically at this point in this in the elementary school budget not putting anything in for increased costs of that because yeah. there yeah, is you have no idea. Well. Yeah, but if you have no idea, sometimes it's like you put something as a... Like a placeholder. Well, it's like a... You know, the town has a reserve fund. It has no idea what it might be spent on, but it seems like a prudent thing to do. Right. Uh, you could say, well, there should be something of a similar nature there in the anticipation of costs that you have no idea yet and that might not materialize and would only be spent if something did materialize. But as far as what I see is the... You know, I sort of look at three you know, possibilities, one of which would be you get, we could take a certain number of students into our existing uh, class structure uh, without any increased cost because if you're less than the number that you're trying to cap each class on, you know, so if you, 
Right, you get you that. Take twenty in the class, and you've only got seventeen in that class. You can take three more, and it doesn't, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, likewise, the sense is so you know that, uh, the, the administration wasn't concerned about that right now. But if you get unusual numbers in any one particular class, then you're going to have to deal with it. The tricky um, thing is like how they're marketing it. You know what I mean? Like right, but they have to. You know, there are. It's the it's the one quarter that's got to be affordable. And right, that, that's kind of my that first target. That essentially is not uh, available to most students. Correct. Right. Okay, just by law. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know what the family size is going in there are going to be, and I don't know what the, the, the ages are going to be of any kids that go in there. It's just, you know, who knows what's coming, and we're not going to find out until the budget is Put to bed. Yeah, your worst case scenario is thirty families with two kids, one kindergarten and one second grade. Right. All rolling in this in year one. Right, and they're all riding the school bus. Correct. Right. Okay. And you know, and, and so of the three things, those are two of the three things, okay, I'm gonna mention. And I'm actually more, more worried about the third one, because even if you've got a much smaller number, okay, and they fit into all our you know, they they, they fit into our existing class sizes. And they fit onto our existing school bus. Some percentage is going to have special ed needs. There you go. Okay, and you may only have, you know, you only have ten kids coming. You say, well, we got no extra cost. We can handle all that, except the fact that three of them, you know, or or, or three or four are going to have some special ed costs, and one of them is probably going to have some significant special ed costs. Okay, and yeah. that's that's the that's then what do you do? Right. That's you know, that's someone say, well, give me some money because. This might happen, you know, we don't tend to budget that way. Yeah. We can't. I'm and, saying, I would say, I mean, and I would say you can't because right. because let's say you increase the budget by $100,000 as projected growth or, or thing. It doesn't happen. I can guarantee you next year right. that you don't subtract $100,000 off the budget. You start at that $100,000. Yeah. And, I, and would, I would actually, I would hope that you're less, that's less true than maybe it has been. I would hope there's more openness so that it's clear that what's being done. Uh, okay. I've, I've never seen a school budget go down. Frontiers, apparently. I saw Frontiers, but yeah. that that's based on... Some of them share. Right. Assessment. Yeah, right. Assessment. Assessment. The overall budget hasn't gone down. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. The I would agree with that. goes down. Right. But, and, and again, I, I, I just think it's just what I've noticed for as long as I can remember, I never, I, and I don't just think it's us. I mean, I just don't see in my base on, because I remember very specifically special ed students that were $65,000. But when that, that $65,000 special ed student left front or to Sunderland Elementary School, and they went to a different community, not, not involved with Union 38, I never saw a $65,000 there's always something that picked up that $65,000. Right. That's, and I mean, I've seen that 20 times. Okay. Maybe not 65, but 32, 75, 18. One big one. Well, and one it was big the same. 120,000 one time. It and I've never seen it reflected when that student left the system. That's why we pulled out those expenses for retirement costs, because they're one-time expenses and they shouldn't be in there yeah, that's absolutely bumping right. the yeah. budget up by... Yeah. Great points. So, Peter, we'll work with you again as soon as we know. We broadcast it widely what our anticipation is on the revenue side. In our global budget piece, as I said uh, earlier in the evening, we're on for the ninth for the schools. Uh, no, second is the schools. Second, second is the schools. Next week, schools. Next week is the schools. So, we'll get the first. So, we do caucus and schools? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be wow. a fun night. Huh? It's going to be a fun night. Long night. Yes. The schools will be quick. <laughs> <laughs> the good smirk, Peter. Like we just it. we just talked about one library tonight. I know. And and what, what's the library total budget to the town? Two hundred and change, less than three hundred thousand. Yeah. So how much is that two hundred thousand out of an eight nine million dollar budget, Scott? Not Percentage wise. So we'll be fine at the school. We'll be done by eight thirty the next That's day. <laughs> 
There you go. Friendly board here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Optimism today, huh, baby? You, you gotta need have to eat it. dinner before you, you get dinner. here. Oh, I get it. Yeah, eat dinner before. We ain't going to eat dinner. We're getting <laughs> home this time. That's the only reason I'm optimistic. I did that tonight. You ate dinner. I ate dinner before yeah, I came tonight. That's a good man. That's a good man. I fed the dog before I came. So. There you go. <laughs> no, I don't. As far as the house revenue thing, I don't expect. Uh, I mean, one of the chunks we get from the state is Chapter 78. And, right. you know, what was in the governor's budget was the same extra 30 bucks a kid. And right. if you, you know, I went, I went and did a little searching and looked at the numbers. And if uh, you looked at, you know, the, the regular way of calculating Chapter 70, would we get a whole bunch less of that? But because, you know, we get this. So it's not like, you know, this whole 200 million they plugged in this year. You know, they're plugging in this time and then another 200 million each time for the next six, right. four years or so on. Not that it was any good. Yeah. Not that it was damn very good. We, no, we've said that all along. Right, but I just... Matter of fact, we t we, that's what the, the state the senator said. said. The legislator said the right. same thing. Un mm -hmm. until, until we break the 82%, it doesn't... It, it right. absolutely yeah. doesn't matter. Right. The bulk of that money went to the Andovers, the Newtons, the towns with the ability to pay. With, with uh, to, to Representative Mark's uh, efforts and the Berkshire delegation, a little bump on the rural side. But we're 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 in the sucker hole. We don't we we don't we're not rural enough, and the eighty two percent we've already demonstrated our ability to pay. So guess what? We're just going to keep paying. Our only our only advantage is that we're sort Sorry. of almost a growth where everybody else in Franklin County is going right. decreasing, That's right. and we're staying that maybe slight rise. So so if we get one more student, we get another thirty dollars. Right. Right. That's it. That's it. And, uh, I, I mean that's the way get, it is. We get things uh, like this rural aid. And so we're, this is now the second, we're in the second year now, mm -hmm. and we're getting 10000 instead of 5000 we got the first year. So yep. you could say, well, that's a huge increase percentage-wise. But That almost covers the cost of attendance, almost, of one student. Almost covers one student. Yeah. But, you know, the interesting thing is with the, the Chapter 70 thing, you know, because they're saying, oh, they're plugging so much more money into the system, they're also, like, putting demands for reporting right, right. Okay, from the schools right. in terms of, uh, you know, what they're doing with all the new money and what uh, they're doing as far as, uh, you know, pushing towards more regionalization and pushing towards uh, making sure that your uh, education <coughs> of the different demographic schools, de demographic groups at the school, mm -hmm. th that they're all proceeding equally. Mm -hmm. uh, That's fair. You know the ones they, they, they cover the minority and the low income and all yeah. those. That, yeah. You know, and so you have to re, you know make sure you report on all this sort of stuff. Well, you know, we're getting another five thousand in chapter seventy money. Uh, you know, is it supposed? You know, is does, does it cover the cost of reporting? Cover the cost of reporting. Right. right. You know, I mean, yeah. it's just silly. Right. And um, you know, the other thing that we've got, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's also still the whole school choice numbers and. The chapter seven, you could be pretty sure. I mean, you know, except for the fact that the state can go into a fiscal crisis and then it can cut local aid. So there's always that possibility, but you should have some heads up on that. And, mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you know, it looks like even right now we know what the number is going to be for next year. I mean, last year I think the legislature came along and upped it by a thousand or two thousand or something, but that was it. Um, the school choice, you know, the the cherry sheet also indicated what you know we should use for planning purposes. But that's like that number is just a uh, shot in the sky. An image, you know, a yeah. mirage sort of. It's like who knows what the and and you know we don't even know what the number is going to be for this year. Sure. Um, so that. So your uh, your your October survey counts for the four funding. Planning for next planning year. Planning for next year, yeah. right? Right. But right. it doesn't do it. It's, you, you don't get actually paid yeah. based on a survey. Full year you out. get paid, you know, end of the year based on exactly who you have. Right. And so. Um, I think our numbers are in line with uh, those projections. I mean, we look at them every month, and that seems like it's okay. But until you, you know, when, uh, until you've got the real numbers, you don't know exactly what you're going to get. Yeah. Uh, we do have a, um, you know, our efforts last year with all the crisis we had with that whole account and so on to, to at least set up some buffer for you know, the future and not just spend the thing down or nothing has put us in 
a fair bit better shape, but the budget that we'll bring in next week, we basically said we are going to, uh, the this, this, this spending that we're recommending from that account, from the school choice account is going to be uh, no more, and it turns out you know, probably no less than the amount of projected income to the account. Mm -hmm. So you're not... Um, so your goal is to still leave the year out with 70-ish somewhere out there as a carry forward. Well, it's actually, see, we ended up getting better numbers, mm -hmm. better real numbers Good. for the end of FY19. So that we ended up, uh, we had planned, we had thought it was going to be like under 10,000 was going to be. Yeah, the it was forward. close to, yeah. it was close and to. we ended up goal. getting like 60,000 extra because our actuals were, you know, they were, Basically, administration was digging into the data better and identifying kids that, yeah, actually, these are schools, you know. I mean, a family moves. Right. Moves out of town, okay. They may be nervous about it because there are some school areas, they'll get kicked out of the school. You know, you can only come to the school, if you only have a right to come to the school if you're a resident of the town. You move out of town. So a lot of, you know, sometimes families wouldn't say they moved out of town, okay. But the moment they move out of town or another town, now they're a school choice kid. Okay, and so we, you know, they did a bunch of follow-up on things, and you know, the, given the way that you know things are, in some cases you've got people who are, uh, uh, you know, going in and out of foster care, and yep. you know, I mean, there are a, a whole lot of different family situations that, that they have to deal with. So you, you know, even think when you think you've got it all, you know, straight, it's still you get surprised sometimes. We ended up the year with uh, sixty instead of seven, and then. Um, you know, we were using a lower number this year than what the October survey indicated. So what we're projecting now for, for the end of this year is, you know, something in excess of 100. And so that's definitely a better situation. Um, and the one thing that we are, uh, you know, we run into a couple of capital issues over the winter uh, that were like immediate, you know, pretty immediate. One was the the whole condenser that was uh, servicing the, the walk-in freezer for yep, the, yep. the food service operation, and that basically was busted. And so uh, we've already replaced that, um, and that's being funded. That was like a uh, vicinity of nine, ten thousand uh, dollars $10,000. we have had a surplus in our school lunch revolving fund because more money was put into it a few years ago than it was supposed to be, and so we're saying, okay, you know, we can use that. To that, that makes logical sense. I mean, it's, yeah, it's absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, stuff. yeah, absolutely. So, okay, and uh, you know, we're hoping there's also a need for a couple other of the fixtures in the cafeteria to be replaced, and we'll be looking at as to whether that can be financed out of there or not. Because you know, usual thing is you look at what other sources of revenue you might be able to have mm -hmm. other than just the regular budget. Right, right. Um, and then the the boiler problem, and you know, we talked to you about that. And, tour of the building yeah. and so on and uh, we're, we're, it turns out we have to you know put that through the bid process but that's going to be about 30 grand and because you know any access to capital funds we want to you know get that done um, any access to capital funds couldn't be before the you know, next fiscal is. year right. um, it's basically because we had good results in the school choice thing that we're taking plan is to take 20 out of school choice to cover that. It's a one-time thing, which is you feel better about doing than something that's recurring. Right. And uh, and then there's an account uh, that I, you know, I wasn't even sure people knew about it, that is what's called a school users fund. Mm -hmm. It's set up 25, 30 years ago, something yeah. like that. And a little bit goes into it every time somebody pays a little bit of a fee to use the building. And that had nine something, 9,000 something in it. And Nothing's been spent out of it for some time. Sure. It has to go for maintenance of the school, and so. That's another direct relationship. It's a, a yeah. perfect use of that, that right. money, right? The usage fee for using the building, pay right. for the building. Right. Yeah. So um, once they get the thing through the bid and so on, that'll be, you know, we have two boilers there. They're each in eight sections. We have section failures that we're paying eight or 9000 to, you know, fix. And here we, you know, supposedly going to do the whole, the one boiler for, uh, 30 grand and you know they're 30 years old and right so you know you could run the building on one of them but if it's just one and the temperature gets down to like below 10 or something then it can't keep it up to yep. 
that makes sense. Temperature. So at least you feel better about it. I mean, it's, you know. I watched the last committee meeting and I appreciated the dialogue as well as the perspective that you brought about keeping the funds that are one time without increasing a particular cost, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't turn into the next year's new expense. Right. It's like, let's figure out a way what's available right. and let's apply it on something that is maybe capital intense or maybe a repair intense, but has a linearity to it. And I thought, I, I, I thank you for that, bringing that to the meeting. I appreciated that perspective. Lin I was watching Lin it on a Lin Sunday morning. Linitarian? What was that word? Linear. Oh, Lin linear. Linear oh. relationship. Oh, I didn't hear. That. I didn't understand that. Linearity is probably yeah. Linearity. Linearity. Yeah. Well, you saw the you saw the budget discussion. Yeah, I think that's like this. Basically, you know, unless something as opposed to tangential. I know. Yeah. You know, we didn't have a we didn't have a, an official vote on what to bring forward to your meeting next week. But right. the number, uh, what they had presented to us was something that was actually we were a little unhappy with how much food choice was being used because a little more was being used than was expected for incoming revenue right and so we we changed that mm -hmm. um so that they would batch and you know, again unless something has changed in the meantime the number was going to be like a 4.9 percent increase uh the one big thing in there that uh um, is a new position is again dealing with this whole special ed situation and um i mean the, the, the term they were using i don't Quite understand it was like team leaders. It was basically another teach another at the teacher salary scale, um, you know, one new position, and they've been having a tough year with you know a number of kids. Mm -hmm. And you heard Catherine say about you know well, five point two percent of the kids are on autism get you know the spectrum. Well, that's right. ten kids at the school. Uh, one of the things you may have seen on that tape was the question: How many one to one aides do we have at the school? Mm -hmm. Seven, one to one age. Right. Okay. Um, that gets, you know, that gets expensive, yes. but you got to do it. Right. Um, so anyway, there was a question about this $55,000 in the budget for a team leader. And, you know, I think someone on the committee had, you know, real questions about that, whether that was going to fly or not. But Darius sort of said, look, and he says, at least we got to present it. Right. Okay, at least we got to, you know, have it there and see, you know, because if we just kill it ourselves, and if, we, if it's something we need and we just kill it ourselves, then we're not doing this right. I appreciated that element of the discussion as well, because, again, if somebody dies at, at school committee level, knowing that there's a need, right. there's not an opportunity to have a larger um, exposure of that need. There are a lot of people in town who no longer have kids in elementary school. Only hear it's about true. the elementary school at town meeting, right? Right. So I think it was important to have that out there and have it as part of the general presentation. And I'm a little bit curious as to, you know, I think it's a, it it can be a um, a difficult situation to explain as fully as you might wish to because there are real privacy concerns, um, and because you're dealing with a you know, maybe a very small population that is the most, getting the, with the most needs, mm -hmm. you really have to be careful about what you can say in, right. in a public uh, session about uh, this because you gotta respect the individuals. Um, so, I, you know, I, one of the things I'm probably gonna go talk to them this week is say, you know, you, you gotta think about how you're gonna present it because if you're trying to make a case for why this additional position is needed mm -hmm. in the special ed program, you gotta have a way of know, putting some meat on the bones, not just saying, well, I can't, you know, we need it, but I can't talk about it. Right, right. Because that doesn't, that doesn't do the job. That's a good point. So. Well, so we get a primer. We'll be out at 8 next week. Now, he says. 745. 745. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, now there is, you know, he was talking about, he says, well, you know, maybe the fact that, that Frontier, he says Frontier is going to vote on their budget. This is as of our meeting earlier this month. He said Frontier is voting on the budget next week. He says the way it stands right now. Is some is Sunderland share is going to be thirty percent decrease from the previous year? Uh, he says I can't imagine them upping it in the next week. So um, if that's the case, and then he sort of want to you know get credit for that on the Sunderland one, and maybe the two put together is something you could buy. Now I went and looked at the at the uh, stuff that was put out when the go 
governor's budget came out about what the, you know, the, the chapter 78 was and, and minimum school spending was for our regional schools too. And I looked at, and I don't know if this is the way it plays through into what we get assessed, but at Franklin Tech, it showed 10 students instead of six students. Mm -hmm. And it showed, you know, a minimum spending requirement that was up 60 or 70,000. Is that That's you consistent, consistent with what we've got, yep. Yeah, and I'm thinking, oh Christ, that just blows the budget right there. So we're not happy to see that. Because, you know, those are the two bills. I mean, those two, you can't fight them. Yep. I mean, yeah. I suppose, I suppose you could fight the frontier, but we haven't ever had any success in doing that. And, um, you know, and I think that, um, I mean, I'm real impressed by Darius. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, he's a, he's a straight shooter, and he's got, you know, he's smart, and, yeah. he, communi and he communicates well. Um, and also by Shelly, the, the new business manager, and she's apparently done a whole bunch of re revamping the business operation over there, and getting, a, I think, a lot more use out of people there who, you know, Patty used to just keep everything to herself, and that, Got her in trouble sometimes, sure. and, and now you've got more people doing, you know, more of the staff doing chunks of work that basically are free and showing up to do what she needs to do. And so I think, you know, I, I've been really impressed how that's. I mean, I've only I've only been on the school committee for you know a little over two years now, and I'm a second superintendent and third business manager. <laughs> and both cases, they're like way better. Nice. Okay, and that's I good think to hear. That's, and and uh, likewise. Uh, you know, the food service director, I, I'm really impressed by. I'm, I'm still, you know, waiting to see on the new director of facilities. Um, but at least the top figures in the administration, I think, are big improvements. Good. Well, that's good to hear. And, and good at, you know, being open about what's going on. So I think that's, you know, that doesn't hurt. No, that's a step in the right direction. Even good, good news and or bad news. It's, right. it's, it's common news, and that's a good thing to have. Right. And no, but, but it's still no matter how, you know, whatever. It's still going to be a problem because right. you go to school there and you take whoever comes in the door and right. you know I mean the state keeps telling you to do this, do this, do that and oh yeah, oh yeah, well we'll get the money if we appropriate it. Right. So we're going to work on that. Okay. Anyway, thank yeah. you. Sorry to take your time. No, 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 no trouble at all, Peter. I know we'll be talking about it next week, but I thought maybe it'd be useful. To yeah. Primary. Maybe we'll have right. our uh, have our have our free cash numbers by then as well. Yeah. Okay. That would be thank helpful. You. Thanks so much. Anything else? Thanks. All set, Scotty. Yep. Nice. He's thinking about skiing down the slopes right now. He's thinking about the apre part of the day. That's right. All right. Motion uh, to no adjourn. Discussion. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You can call us out three to zero, please, at eight thirty-four.